be able to come to share with you the goodness of the Lord. And we just yeah. praise God to each of you for who you are, for what you've done, and what God is doing in your lives. And for just the blessedness of being able to be able to have, as grandmom and granddad would say, the right exercise in both our minds and our labor. Amen. Yeah. We serve a mighty God. He is great, good, glorious. He is supreme and he does all, knows all, and uh, knows not only that, but he knows when to do, what to do, and how much of it to do. Amen. 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 And I'm glad I'm proud of it. Amen. Thank God for our Zoom members. I can see y'all tonight, and even though I see spiritually those who join us on Facebook Live, and I'm just glad for our members and friends that join us on uh, Zoom Live as we are connecting together this night, truly, we can give God glory, give Him praise, give Him thanksgiving. Well, uh, shout out to two of our members and ministry workers, amen, that's celebrating birthdays. Uh, Brother Kenneth Harris on the uh, Facebook Live camera, amen, he's celebrating a birthday today, and Mel stands in the table, amen, and Nelson said works, he's celebrating a birthday today, and so we're thankful and honored for these brothers that work in ministry with us, along with all of these ministry leaders, that are present tonight that we're celebrating their birthdays. We're letting them get their Jesus in now. Amen. Amen. And uh, however the Lord directs them, amen, in the name of the Lord. Let me say that again. However the Lord directs them, in the name of the Lord, they can celebrate uh, the remainder of their birthday and this uh, New Year's uh, in the Lord. Amen. 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 Not worried about what the wife said. She's going to take him home and uh, go and feed him a hamburger and some french fries and tell him that's it, buddy. Relax. Take it easy. Amen. Uh, it's, it's the other thing that I'm worried about. Amen. I'm praying about. Amen. My, my friend, my labor, my brother. Amen. In the flesh and in the spirit, Brother Harris. And I, who have been friends now for over, amen, uh, over 40 years. I share the testimony that we met in Sunday school in 1972 and we became friends and have been friends ever since the end of the 20 years he was away serving in the military when he came back we connected right back where we left off. So I praise God for friendships, amen. amen. So I'm not worried about him, amen. He's my age now. And, uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock, the only thing he's watching is the TV or rather is watching him, amen. 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 Excited tonight that God has blessed us and kept us and allowed us to come to the end of another year. Yes, yes. As we prepare to close the curtain of the year 2020 and open the curtain of the year 2021. I'm excited and encouraged about God, yeah. about what He's already done, and about what He's doing, about what He's going to do in all of our lives, individually and collectively. I'm so grateful to God tonight that he has given all of us this precious privilege to come together to celebrate uh, the closing of one year and the opening of a new year. While some things we may take into the new year with us, amen, that uh, has been a part of our lives in 2020, I believe that God has some great and glorious things for all of us in 2021. Yeah. Someone several years ago asked me that when we started having uh, New Year's Eve, celebration watch service as we call it at 6 p.m. Uh, so early before midnight uh, told them it was not because we were afraid to be out nor was it uh, that we really had somewhere else we wanted to rush and be but the truth be told uh, they are in um, Israel in the homeland of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, where he was born uh, where he ministered and where uh, he was crucified, buried, resurrected on the third appointed morning. It is now midnight. It is now 2021. Yeah. So we join them, amen, and they celebrate with the Savior. And truth be told, amen, there is this new heaven and earth that's coming, this new Jerusalem that's coming down from heaven, amen. Yeah. And uh, whatever time zone the Lord has us in, as long as I'm with him, I'm all right. Amen. amen. Let me get into the word of the Lord for a few moments tonight as God has given me direction, given me this precious privilege. I want us to call our attention as we think about the close of this year and the opening of next year 
many passages of scripture out of the gospel as recorded by Matthew in the eighth chapter. And I would you that you would look with me, beginning at verse 23, verses 23 through 27. The gospel as recorded by Matthew in the eighth chapter. It's a synoptic passage that is found both in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But I want to look at it out of Matthew 8. Earlier this year, the Lord gave me direction to preach from it out of Mark 4. He has given me direction to come back to it tonight out of the lenses of Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. Wherever you are, I would that you would stand, open your Bible, whether it be in book form or technology, and read silently with me on the word of the Lord. I will be reading from the New King James Version. As I always share with the Rockland family, if by chance in my preaching and teaching I say something that is worthy of the Lord, by all means say amen. And if I get off track, just say, Lord, have it. Amen. Beginning at verse 23 of the gospel that's recorded by Matthew, the eighth chapter. The word of the Lord reads as thus. Now, when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you so filled? Are you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be? Even the winds and the sea obey him. Wherever you are, you might be seated in the name of the Lord. Just give me a moment of meditation. Father, I thank you. I praise you. I bless your name again in all the earth. I Thank you again for this precious privilege of worship, praise, fellowship, and celebration. Thank you for another year of ministry, another year of life, another year of your faithfulness, your goodness, and your kindness upon all of our lives. Another year, dear God, that we are able to come back to your house to acknowledge your goodness in and over our lives. Then, Lord, to seek you as we prepare to close not only the curtain of this ministry year, but open the curtain of the new ministry year as well as of our lives. Father, I thank you, I praise you, and I give you glory. Thank you for the opportunity to stand behind your sacred desk to declare the unsearchable riches of your word. Pray now to God as I have in days past that as I stand and as you speak for the moments that I was to share, that you would hide me behind the cross and speak to me through me and allow your word to permeate my mind, that you would give me clarity of thought, clarity of speech, clarity, O oh God, of meditation and understanding, that as I stand and speak for thee, glory and honor and praise be unto you. God, I bid now, first anointing of your Holy Spirit, for the moments that I was to share that you would speak, Lord, not only into my life, but into the life of every soul that hears, sees, witnesses, and takes part in this worship celebration, both live and pre-recorded. That, oh God, that whatever our needs are, you meet us at our point of need. Magnify now your presence, edify us, your people, terrify the devil, oh God, Satan, give glory again, oh God, to your Father, in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The moments tonight, as God has given me direction, I want to preach from perhaps what I call a dual subject. Uh, it may be posted already, but uh, for me, and even for you, uh, preaching from the thought of the theme of, I'm grateful in spite of the storm. I'm grateful. Amen. In spite of the storm. Amen. I'm grateful. Yes, sir. In spite of the storm. In order to bring it home to you, I want to raise the question to you tonight. Are you grateful in spite of your storm? Right. Are you grateful in spite of your storm? 
History shall record that the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season is being marked as one for the record books. Researchers and meteorologists who began, if you will, calculating and calling upon the data going into the 2020 storm season predicted that it would be an above average season for storms. It was interesting because the University College of London this time last year shortly at the end of the 2019 hurricane storm season Join with forecasters and they continue even through the winter and through the spring of 2020. They all surmised around the predictions of just 15 to 20 named storms with only about four major hurricanes. These forecasters would have it, that job, that ability to do what's called forecasting and to try to predict and try to give, if you will, an indication just how many storms would come across the Atlantic and come, if you will, toward America. The reality is it was only an educated guess. That's right. right. Two months into the season, the 2020 storm season, NOAA released an update regarding the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season and its outlook. It was interesting because the update came to conclude that as many as 25 named storms, some six major hurricanes, which amounted to more than double the average between the years of 1981 and 20 and 20, would ultimately now hit our nation. It was interesting, my brothers and my sisters, because as of December 1, the official end of the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season, they have now been reported, they have now been recorded some 31 tropical depressions, of which 30 became tropical storms, 13 became hurricanes, and 6 were classified, if you will, as major or destructive hurricanes that hit our land. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, my brothers and my sisters, because even the most recent storms, Hurricane Loda, marked what was called the ninth letter of the Greek alphabet, which was used to list the designation of storms this season. And for the first time in history, the names in the Greek alphabet that were used to name the storms, Eta, Theta, and Leota, have been used to which the hurricane season for the year 20 and 20 passed an all-time high in 2005 for the most number of recorded storms in the nation. Even more, my brothers and my sisters, the impact and the injury and the implication for these storms and the lives that it tore from top to bottom, inside and out, are still being determined, still being evaluated, still being assessed, not only in terms of dollar value, but in terms of lives destroyed and lives lost. Even more, my brothers and my sisters, the enormity of the meteorologist's ability to try to predict the storms this year has also demonstrated that with all of the storms that the meteorologists have tried to predict, plan, and have us to understand that we're coming our way, the reality is there were some storms that came in your life and in my life that we couldn't predict. I wish I had a praying church up in this place tonight. We have in the year of 2020 had our share of storms. Yeah, we've, had, we've had, we've had, we've had some atmospheric storms. we had some hurricanes that come across our nation, but across the globe, there's been a pandemic called coronavirus, which has been a knockout storm. Yes, amen. amen, amen, amen. Over, over, over millions of lives have been affected in every region of the world. Millions of lives have been infected by this coronavirus storm that swept in under the radar of most of us and caused havoc and destruction and even death in the tens or hundreds of thousands here in America. What a storm. What a storm. What a storm. What a storm. We 
had to well a call, the coronavirus called COVID-19. And we just didn't stop with that storm and all of those hurricanes that Noah had predicted. We, we had another storm, a political storm. Talk back to him if you will. By a president and by some political officials who decided by their own right and their own will that they would cause destruction in our nation like never before. It was said, it was said that the soul of our democracy was at stake and, and not only was the will of the people and the soul of our democracy, amen, uh, at stake in America, but we had a political storm, a political parties, we had a president who, despite a legitimate loss of an election, still trying to flood the airways with misinformation, uh, trying to flood the airways with things that are scandalous, things that are seductive, things that are satanic, and statements, my brothers and my sisters, uh, that are contrary to the very truth that history has already recorded. We are a year of storms. I wish I had a praying church. We, we had, amen, to weather repeated storms, if you will, of a disregard, disrespect, and even deadly force of storms among black and brown lives uh, in America. Never in the history of America has it been publicly publicized live, amen, uh, black and brown individuals who are citizens of this nation uh, who lost their lives at the hands of those uh, who have been called to be peacekeepers but yet stirred up storms by causing all kind of havoc and dropping deadly showers and drops of rain in the lives of Americans that look like you and me. Yeah, had, we had, we had the weather, a complacent Congress whose storms with the help of a shameful Senate and a cynical Congress person who fled for personal color and left its citizenry out in the storm, in the midst of the cold, in the midst of the rain, in the midst, my brothers and my sisters, of, of the howling winds that have been blowing upon the lives of a people who were caught in a pandemic storm and now are caught in a political storm and even in an economic storm not knowing what to do. We had to weather some storms. My brothers and my sisters, if that wasn't enough, we witnessed, if you will, mass people throughout America from coast to coast who have been deprived of shelter from this economic storm and who are struggling to have life's basic needs and having food and shelter and clothing and health care while a few are boasting about a stock market and only a few people have stock in and tax breaks that don't hit the ordinary working person like you and me and 401ks that they're boasting upon that if they're not careful, what goes up, talk back to them if you will, will go down. We had to weather some storms. All I'm trying to get you to understand is that every now and then, my brothers and my sisters, you got to learn how to be grateful in spite of the storms. Yeah. Many of you have had to weather some of life's personal storms this year. You you battled an issue with your health. You battled the death of a loved one. You, you battled, my brothers and my sisters, what it means to try to live off of one income or no income. Or you battled what it means to try to hold things together when everything that was normal in our lives was turned up. Young people have had to battle how to learn, not in a classroom, but if you will, my brothers and my sisters, uh, in a house room. Young people have had to try to keep their minds focused uh, on learning and becoming better students uh, and try to connect technically with others that are learning and not being able to assess and have, if you will, the basic necessities of technology in order to stay at the equal place of everybody else. Many of young people have lost almost a year of learning because we are in a storm. My brothers and my sisters, I could go on tonight, but the truth be told that there are some other problematic storms that yet exist in 2020 and that may very well take us into 20 and 21. Here tonight, my brothers and my sisters, 
at the end of this year and at the beginning of a new year, I'm still grateful in spite of my storm. And that's why I raised the question tonight, are you grateful in spite of your storm? Because your storm may not be my storm, but the truth be told, uh, if you're alive and breathing, amen, you had a storm. And if you hadn't had a storm, you ought to get up right now and go to shouting, jumping, clapping, hollering, screaming. Let folk next door thank you to lost your mind. But let them know you're just giving praise to God for keeping you and blessing you and watching over you and never letting you go through some stuff that you could have went through because he was with you in the storm. Well, what we discover then tonight is that through the lens of Matthew, yeah. Matthew takes us to a day and a time that Jesus and his disciples had gone about their lives and suddenly there came a storm. Yeah. Interestingly, my brothers and my sisters, Matthew, like that of Mark and Luke, they record this passage. And ultimately, when you read all three passages collectively, they do give us details in their own perspectives of how this narrative, how this passage, not only affected the lives of Jesus' disciples, but how it can affect the lives of people, disciples like you and me. Matthew, my brothers and my sisters, in this passage, simply says that Jesus now gets in to a boat. And Matthew, my brothers and my sisters, as he opens this narrative now, at verse 23, he says that Jesus' disciples follow him. In other words, Jesus had been doing something all day long, and if you read the previous verses and the previous chapters, you understand, my brothers and my sisters, that this narrative connects us to other narratives that Jesus had spent a day of ministry. Jesus had spent another day of serving people. He had spent a day in preaching and teaching and offering aid to those who were going through their own personal storms. And Matthew records that the disciples are who had become first-hand witnesses of the mission, ministry, message, and methods of Jesus, like father, like son, followed Jesus into the boat. But what Matthew tells us is that as they launch out, as they cast out in the boat to go to the other side of the lake of the sea, the Bible says that as Jesus retires for a quick nap of refreshment and renewal, then the disciples, as they are paddling, as the disciples, as they're going across the sea, ultimately a storm rages and rises, and the disciples now realize that the boat is being filled with water, that the sea is tossing them from side to side, that the waves are filling the boat, and they feel like they're about to sink, that all is lost, and Jesus is asleep, and one of them decides we better go wake up Jesus before we get knocked out of this boat into the water and it's over with and done. And what we discover when we read the narrative is that verse 24 said that suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with waves. Jesus was asleep. My brothers and my sisters, did you recall back to around late January or early February? We were going about our business. We were doing the normal things that we normally do. And all of a sudden, these reports started coming forth in the news media about a virus that our president was saying was only in China and that only one person had come in America and that only about 15 folk were going to get sick and then poof out of nowhere it was going to all be over and here we are some 10 and a half months later here we are some 10 and a half months after the initial admittance that the storm came 
that the storm like that of the text has filled the boat with water, yeah. that souls now are in danger, yeah. that lives have been lost, yeah. and here they are now, rather than trying to take, if you will, a lead in saying that, yes, we messed this thing up, and perhaps we should have went and called on Jesus, yeah. and still talking about everything but Jesus. But I like this narrative because the disciples, when they realized that the storm had come, rather than the disciples trying to act like poor and just, you know, one of them quick showers in the summertime that you have where it rains for about five or ten minutes and pours down hard, then the clouds vanish away, the sun comes back out. That the disciples, because they knew that this was a different kind of storm. And the disciples, because some of them were fishermen, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, they had been used to being out on the water in a boat in the midst of a storm. They understood the Sea of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee, as it's called. They understood that because it was surrounded by mountains and the cool air off the mountains, some 12,000 feet high and down at the sea level, about some four or five thousand feet that every now and then the, the warm winds across the waters of the sea and the cool air coming off the mountains would get themselves together and get in a boxing match for a few moments and it would thunder and lightning and rain but then the rain would dissipate the clouds would clear up and they would continue to sail on but here they are at the end of a day of ministry with Jesus uh, where Jesus had fed one writer said some thousand folk where Jesus had healed uh, some who had been sick where Jesus uh, had ministered to souls uh, who had went from doctor to doctor and place to place uh, that when they got in the boat with Jesus and started across the sea uh, and the storm came uh, that the more they poured water out of the boat the more water got in the boat and they realized that this is not just an ordinary storm uh, that we better go Jesus. And so, verse 25 of the narrative says that his disciples came to him and woke him up saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Let me pause here parenthetically because I do believe beyond a shadow of a doubt with every thought storm that we've had this year, there have been some praying folk in America. Talk back to me if you will. Yeah. I'm one of them, amen, and most of you all are another one. Yeah. We've prayed this year like we've never prayed before. Yeah. We've shook Jesus this year yeah. like we had not shook him in a long time. Some of us, my brothers and my sisters, uh, have been blessed to pray in our homes uh, because we couldn't go nowhere else uh, like we never prayed in our homes. Uh, and God has a way in his own right uh, how to bring prayer back to the home. Uh, God has a way in his own right uh, how to get us to call on his name in the morning, in the noon day, in the midnight hour. God has a way uh, to allow the landscape of our lives uh, to get in such a predicament uh, that we can't see our way out. Uh, we can't jerk on our way out. Uh, we can't think our way out. Uh, and the only way that we can get out uh, is with the help of the Lord. So the text says that the disciples came to him and it wasn't them, one of them. You know how you used to do your children in the morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's time to get up. No, it was one of them. Get up, Jesus. It was one of them 911 prayers that we do sometimes. Lord, if you don't come see about me now, I'm not going to make it. Amen. Maybe it's just me that have 911 prayers. Y'all don't have them kind of prayers. Them 911 prayers. Well, Lord, if you don't come see about me right now, everything is going to fall away. Lord, if you won't do this right now, I'm not going to be able to make it another day. Lord, if you won't do this right now, Lord, I just don't know what I'm going to do. It was one of them, Jesus, I need you to get up. I need you to get up right now. So what the text tells us is that the storm came suddenly. And my brothers and my sisters, there's nothing like a sudden storm. Because a sudden storm, my brothers and my sisters, 
is a storm that comes unexpectedly. And 2020 has been a year of unexpected things. I don't know about you. It's been a year of things without warning. Because if any of us knew that, amen, the coronavirus was coming, we perhaps would have made, amen, some preparation long before we were told it was coming. If any of us knew that there would be a shortage of angel salt, a shortage of shaman, a shortage of all the other, you know what I'm talking about. We made some preparation. If any of us knew that it had been a shortage of some of the Lysol wipes and some of the Clorox wipes, we made some other arrangements a long time ago. But because the storm called the coronavirus came suddenly, and because it came unannounced, it made itself known in our lives like this storm did in the lives of the disciples. But not only was it sudden, it was severe. It was severe because the impact of the storm was problematic. It was severe because their lives were threatened. And the reality is that 20 and 20 has been a year. It may not have been for you, but it's been for a whole lot of people. Not only a year that has been sudden, but it's been a year that's been severe. In other words, it's been a difficult year for some folk. And every time I see folk that are in cars, in line, trying to just get some food, I know that's a difficult year. Every time I see folk who say, we both lost our jobs, and at the end of the month, when all of these things that were put in place to keep us in our place are going to vanish away, we don't know what to do. It's been a difficult, severe storm because it's been problematic, it's been painful, and when I see a Congress, when I see shameful senators and cynical congressmen, men and women talking about everything but the people that they've been elected to serve. When I see a politician talking about all this other crazy stuff and folk are dying and hospitals got to call in tractor trailers to be mauled. When I see folk talk about how they're going to help folk and everybody else is struggling and all principles. 
the writers leave with us in the narrative. Verse 23, Matthew 8 says, Now Jesus got in the boat. His disciples followed him. Suddenly, a great tempest arose in the sea so that the boat was covered with waves. But he was asleep. And the disciples came to him and woke him up saying, Lord, save us. For we are perishing. Jesus simply says to them, Why are you fearful? How is it that you have little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. The Bible says that there was a great calm. It is interesting because when you read that narrative on the surface, it says that the storm came suddenly, that it was severe because it filled the boat and they were about to sink and they thought that they were about to die. And thus, as a means of their fear, these disciples went and woke up Jesus. And the reality is, my brothers and my sisters, whether Jesus is with us in spirit or in flesh, the reality is, first of all, that we do have the presence of Jesus. You can shout right there. It is interesting because no matter what kind of storm life puts us in, we always have the presence of Jesus. Matter of fact, he's present everywhere and he's absent nowhere. And because he's that kind of God, it really doesn't matter what kind of storm life puts us in. The reality is that we're never in the storm by ourselves. That's the news tonight. And see, all that we went through in 2020, even though it's been one storm after another, the reality is that Jesus has been with us in the storm. Oh, you want to shout right there. The reality is because Jesus was in the boat with the disciples, the, 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 the disciples were still in good hands. All state talks about you in good hands with them when you ensure your life. But with Jesus, you are assured of a good life when you're in his hands. And because Jesus was with the disciples in the storm, and because he's with you and me in the storm, the reality is you can be grateful for his presence in your storm. Secondly, my brothers and my sisters, you can be grateful in spite of the storm, not only because of the presence of Jesus in the storm, but for Jesus' power over the storm. Stay with me, I'm going back to the text. The reality is that the disciples came to Jesus because the storm was sudden and severe and they were scared and they woke Jesus up and because Jesus was with them, Jesus, the Bible says, and he asked them in verse 26, why are you so fearful? Why is it that you have little faith? That then he arose, he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. In other words, Jesus still controls the storms of life. And because we're not by ourselves in the storm, when Jesus is with us, Jesus can command the storm to be still. I like that tonight. I don't know about you, because all there's been one storm after another, but Jesus keeps calm and storm. There's been one situation after another, and Jesus just keeps on speaking. There's been one thing that we've had to deal with, and another thing we've had to deal with, but Jesus keeps on speaking. And because he's in control of where we've been, he's in control of where we're going, he's in control of where we are right now. The disciples had been with him all day long. He was in control then over sickness. The disciples had been with him all day long. He knew where we were going because when he got in the boat, he said in another passage, let's cross over to the other side. But because Jesus was going to the other side, he knew where they were going. He knew where they had been. And he knew where they were right now. That's good news because Jesus knows where you are right now. And if your storm is raging, if your storm is tossing, if your storm is turning you upside down, he knows how to calm your storm. Amen. Amen. So Jesus' presence, Jesus' peace. Lastly, Jesus, my brothers and my sister, speaks to the disciples. And he says, why are you? Fearful. Oh, you of little faith. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of 
sound mind. God doesn't want us to be fearful. He calls us to be faithful. Let me pause right there for a moment. God doesn't call us to be successful. He calls us to be faithful. The word says, be thou faithful unto the end, and I will give you a crown of life. And what you got to understand, my brothers and my sisters, is that when you're in your storm, you can always know and rest assured of the presence of Christ and of the power of Christ. And when you shake Jesus, whether it be shaking him physically as the disciples did, whether it be shaking them spiritually through your prayers or through a song, that's why you got to learn how to praise your way out of situations. That's why you got to get some word and get some word in you and declare unto you, O oh Lord, I cry out, and unto you, Lord, my soul shouts. You got to learn how to get in the word of God and be like the psalmist when he declared unto the hills, I lift my eyes for all my help come from the Lord. You got to be like the word of God. If God for us. Who can be against us? You got to be like the word of God. You got to understand that his peace passes all understanding. You got to lean on the word of God. Know I'm with you always even to the end of the world. You got to lean on the word of God that he who began a good work in you shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You got to lean on the word of God that Lord I'm with you always even to the end of the world you got to lean and depend on the word of God that God is not a God that he should lie not a son of man that he should repent and if he says won't he do it I got it won't he do it from around me won't he do it won't he put food on your table won't he put clothes on
the God we claim to know and love. He's with us. And we can be grateful in spite of every storm we've had to endure. Some of you that are listening and some of you that are watching have had some storms this year from people that said they loved you. And you never thought that you'd have to endure those storms. But here you are, the close of 2020. Example that I give all the time. Just like a palm tree in a tropical land that's deep rooted, grows tall. It bends during the storm. 2020 is going to give a bending. The reality is, when the storm is over, those palm trees, those that don't break, they straighten up and they stand back up. And that's how it is in life sometimes. God allows our lives to bend. Sometimes he allows it to be broken. But the good news is that when we're rooted and grounded in him, we're like a tree that's planted by the rivers of waters. We shall not be moved. My brothers and my sisters, let me say this to you as we prepare to close and offer a prayer of thanksgiving for this year. That if you had accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life tonight, I beg you, I implore you. I do everything in the name of the Lord that I know how to do to say to you. Just repeat these words. Lord, I receive you as Savior and Lord of my life. I'm a sinner. I ask for forgiveness. I desire to be saved. In Jesus' name. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. I believe that if you confess that tonight unto the Lord, if you find a Bible, teaching a Bible, preaching a Bible, living church, not a perfect church, because if you find a perfect one, you let me know. And I'm going to come fellowship with you all. And I admit, you're going to find out it ain't going to be forever. But you find a church that believes in the word of God, that believes in the power of prayer. The people of God are trying their best to live for the Lord. You get in and you follow the salvatory steps, get baptized, give your life to the Lord. Despite your storms, you will have a spirit of gratitude and an attitude of thankfulness. You appreciate life more than you ever have before. The truth be told, my brothers and my sisters, yes, all of our lives could be better. But one of my favorite sayings is that my worst day, my worst day, is somebody else's best day. And it's not because of cash, cars, clothes, or creed. It's not about tangible things, but it's about the love of God, the faithfulness of God, the kindness of God, the grace of God the mercy of God and the love of God that he showers over my life the life of so many others every day we have a spirit of gratitude God a long time ago punished and killed every one of us for our sins we confess the hope and faith in him he gave us another chance and now we want to do whatever we can to make sure that we honor our God challenge you, my brothers and my sisters, as this year closes and the new year open up, grow closer to God, get rooted and grounded in His Word, and whatever storms we endure next year, just like He brought us through this year, He's going to bring us through next year. I'm living in expectation. To the members of Rockland, we're closing the curtain of the year of ministry of 20 and 20. Of Discipline decisions. That was our ministry theme for 20 and 20. Discipline decisions. We are about to open the curtain to the ministry year 20 and 21. The ministry year of divine shifting. Divine shifting. S H I F T I N G. God is about to shift, change the things. It's coming over the horizon. 
I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my soul. God's about to shift some things in my life. He's about to shift some things in your life. Amen. The Bible says that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it been revealed to the hearts of humanity things that the Lord has in store for those who love him, for those who are called according to his purpose. Divine shifting is about to come. Don't miss the shift, amen? Divine shifting. The Lord's will until Sunday morning join us at 9.30 a.m. Hour. We're going to worship. We'll go live around 9.50 this week because this coming Sunday we're going to do communion, Holy Communion. We're going to do Holy Communion at 10 a.m. Rockland. We tried to make sure that those of you who need your communion get it. Your tribe leaders should have contacted you. If they hadn't, contact me. We'll make sure you get it. We're going to do it virtually 10 a.m. The Lord's will this coming Sunday morning as a part of our worship celebration. Before I get up to preach, we're going to do it. We're going to celebrate the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we will celebrate our first Sunday worship, praise, and celebration. If you've been blessed, join us not only during our worship services, but go to our website, www.rocklandbaptchurch.org. Look at what we are trying to do in the name of the Lord, the people that we're partnering with. We're partners with many nonprofits, just to name a few. Samaritan Center here, Hensonville, Nashville Rescue Mission, Nashville, Phoenix Rising, which is a nonprofit outreach for individuals who are being recently released from incarceration. And there are several others that we partner with, partner with some other churches other congregations to make sure that people are fed, to make sure that people's needs are met. And if you believe in partnering, partner with us because we can't do it by ourselves. Go to our website, Rockland, B A P T Church.org. Look at our gift tab. Give a generous offering unto the Lord, knowing that as you partner with us, we're partner with others. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you Sunday morning. The Lord's will. We love you. Happy New Year to each of you. God bless you for all of those that are on Zoom tonight. Praise God for you. What a wonderful opportunity. It's a new year in Jerusalem, in the city of our Lord. So and very soon here in Nashville, it will be New Year. But Happy New Year. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you the Lord's will Sunday morning.